Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another video. I am here with Halo VFX, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that's creating some of the most epic Halo content you've actually seen on YouTube uh, this year and last year. It's, it's really cool to be able to see what he's doing and the fact that he took time to uh, join me today to share a little insight on do we think the Flood are coming back in Halo Infinite? As well as talking about how he is remastering some of the cutscenes, or one cutscene, and I think he plans to do more cutscenes of Halo 3, um, and, and, and just a bunch more. So without any further introduction, how you doing, man? Thank you so much for being here. Hey. It's a pleasure. It's awesome to be uh, kind of interviewed for the first. I think you're the first person, dude. Uh, it's uh, it, it's it's honestly, it's just, it's it's a pleasure to be able to have you on here. Is this your first interview? This this is my yeah. This is my first interview. So you you get that pleasure. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is, man. Let's talk a little bit about um, the flood when it comes to Halo Infinite. I, this is going to be a very ambitious game. Uh, a lot of your content is actually focused around the flood and you know charity falls has been i'm going to be running in the background as we talk here um it, it's been received well by many what do you think is going through 343's mind and especially with the history of of zeta halo what do you feel are the probabilities of, of the flood actually returning and in what way? Do you think 343 would ever market it or do you think they would leave it silent until the actual game releases and then it's kind of like a, it's like it sneaks up on you kind of like Halo CE? Do you think it's gonna happen? If so, how? Um, personally, I'm definitely in the mindset of the flood are gonna be back. I mean, they've, teased it with the whole pug audio recording video that they put out and I, I think generally the fan base kind of wants the flood back I'm, I'm sure some fans don't but for my, my personal opinion is they're definitely going to be back it, it feels like it would just be a mistake if they didn't um, but who knows like I mean we we don't really have any inside knowledge on this sort of thing so it, it's tough although we don't I I do feel like one, one thing I've always wanted to see is the flood in like 4K. Thank God <laughs> you've been able to do that. So thank you. <laughs> but um, I, I, you know, I've, I've looked at some of the marketing material and concept art for Halo Infinite, and it just seems like it's going back to the roots of yeah. Halo CE. You know, there's, you know, the map that I recreated, Hydro, um, that took heavy inspiration from Halo Reach. So they're, they're reaching back into older games and, and taking the best elements of all of them and pouring them into this one, which is why I would think that when it comes to a new audience, right, some of the things that, that, that made us love Halo in the beginning was that nostalgic feeling of the surprise of the flood. It was the vast environments. It was the... It's the mystery. Moves. It was all, the environments. And yeah, the mystery. And, and I think that is the main focus really going into Halo Infinite. And which is why I believe that, without a doubt, we are going to be in for a surprise when it comes to the Flood. I personally just believe they're going to be there, but it's cool to think that you think so too, because it, it, it aligns well with the content yeah. you've been making. And that actually, that ties me into actually what you're doing now, right? When it comes to content. Uh, we'll talk about Halo Infinite in a second, but just to backtrack a little bit into prior games, Halo 3. Uh, everyone's been wanting a remaster, or most people have been wanting a remaster uh, for the cutscenes, and you've took it upon yourself to do it, I think, for the final mission? Is that what it is? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so most people know me from the like the Charity Falls series, which I started, uh, where are we, February? I probably started it a little less than a year ago. Um, and then I basically did these two episodes, which... Hopefully it's going to be five episodes, but it's a lot of work. And I'm trying not to burn myself out, which is why I kind of kicked off this Halo 3 cutscene remastering stuff. Like, all, all those videos. I, I kind of want to remaster a few cutscenes from Halo 3, just because I've always wanted to see Halo 3 remastered. I know they probably will never do it. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't think they're going to be doing any blur cutscenes for any current or future Halo titles. I don't know if that's true. All I know is that, I mean, Infinite, I think they've already said that it's going to be like a one-shot camera in-engine, kind of just like the Bungie games. And uh, 
maybe that's a good route to go for them, I guess, if if they're trying to hit this nostalgic feeling. So that's a, so it's it's kind of like it's kind of like God of War, yeah. right? Um, how they're doing the shots in, in Halo Infinite, which is kind of cool. But for Halo Three, the remaster that you're doing, it's I, I think it's going to be something that's well received. I mean, from what I've already seen, can you give me, can you give me a insight into just how long one of those scenes um, actually takes to like like just so we can get perspective. As in on the for the Halo Three cutscene or for Chariot Falls? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the um, um, Halo Three cutscene. So scene. for something like that, so I probably spent. A week, I think, on that first shot. But obviously, I had to model the Pelican, and I need to model Chief and Arbiter, which I've just done over the weekend. But obviously, so in visual effects, you have to go through all these different uh, disciplines. So you start off with modeling the character. So you go from all of my stuff in every single video you've seen is all started from a cube. I haven't ripped out any game uh, any game assets and just use them just because they wouldn't they just wouldn't live up to the uh, the quality that I want to just because they're, they're built for in engine they're not built for like offline rendering which is what I do all of my stuff is pre-rendered mm -hmm. it's not in Unreal it's all inside Maya and it's all rendered using Redshift which is the render engine um, but yeah basically it would take it's probably take me a day or two to model an asset so the pelican took me two days i think to model um, and i still have to model the inside of it because i realized that in one of the shots you see straight into it which i didn't think about um and then you have to uv the object which is basically if you imagine a cube and you opened up the cube and flattened it out so it's like a 2d like piece of paper almost kind of like when you're younger if you try to make a cube and you cut up mm -hmm. a bit of paper and then you can fold it in to make a cube that's pretty much what a UV layout is. Right, yeah. Um, and that's how you, you basically like paint textures onto this UV layout. And then you get your textured object from that. And then you have to do the look dev, which is where you give it like the material property. So whether it's metal, glass, uh, plastic, rubber, all that sort of thing. So you have the textures, which is like the color of it. And then you have the materials, which is uh, like the substance in a way. Um, that's interesting, man. I, it's it's you know maya unreal engine all these different tools it believe me i mean i'm jumping into unreal engine and you know as a forger it's 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 kind of comical to go back into forge um not to bash anyone that finds forge as difficult but when you jump into these systems into these programs it's not overly complex it just yeah. takes time to understand but it, it is it is seriously eye opening when you jump back into Forge. You're like, oh my gosh, all these assets are already created for me. You know, it's like it takes out the entire um, beginning process. Only thing about Forge that is a downside is that you can't create yeah. your own. You know, you're just working with what you've been given. But in a sense, that's 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 a skill within itself to be able to work with something that is is handed to you and, and to still be able to make something that's unique to yourself. But to have you know, two days in order to be able to create an arbiter or a chief model or like a pelican model is personally to me it's pretty impressive and, and I like the fact that you keep everything up to date on uh, your Twitter. Which, by the way, what's your Twitter handle it is for people that are watching at this? Halo underscore underscore VFX. Yeah. Um, I I I just think you're doing epic work, man. I I I hope that one day I can get to that level when it comes to <laughs> Unreal Engine. Yeah, man. You definitely can. I, I don't see myself as being this extremely talented person. It's, it's just because I've been doing this for quite a long time now. And I'm a bit of a nerd. Halo's always been like a big part of my life. So as soon as I started learning visual effects, I've always had Halo as a thing that I've wanted to kind of tackle. Um, I probably should have started with the Halo 3 cutscenes just because Halo 3 is my favorite out of, this, uh, out of the whole franchise. Well, I'm just, I'm actually, um, I'm really looking forward to Charity Falls too, and that, that'll that likely come later on this year, probably closer to the release of Infinite or so, right? Yeah. Like, we were talking about that yeah. before. Um, but now that we're back on the topic of Halo Infinite, <laughs> I just wanted to ask when it comes to, you know, I talked to Kevin about this um, yesterday, or like a couple of days ago, when we did our interview, Kevin Kulex, 
Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we were talking about the environment, right? As two creatives here that can look at something blank and create something <laughs> out of nothing, right? <laughs> like, what do you if, you, if you could imagine anything about what we're going to see in the February update, what would you expect when it comes to, or what would you like to see when it comes to the environment? Um, we've seen the hexagon pillars. We've seen an alpine environment. I, it's likely that we're going to get snow and desert and swamplands and all of that. But how do you actually see the hexagons interacting with the environment? How do you see the environment and, and, and the wildlife actually interacting with you? They have a new engine now, and you're, you're very well aware of how these things work right behind the scenes. How far do you think they can push it, and where do you think they would take it to? If that's not too I, deep of a question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to have to try and remember all that question. Uh, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Um, no, that's all good. Uh, I let me, let me think. Um, in terms of... Because they've built this entirely new engine, it's... I'm expecting a lot from it because out of how many years have they been in development? Like six years now, I think five I think or six years. I think it's about six years. I'm gonna guess two of those years were just making the engine. I would agree. So, I, as much as we say, oh, they've been in development for five or six years, they probably haven't really been like full force for the whole six years. So it would be unfair to be like, oh, this is a six-year game. We're expecting absolutely insane amounts of detail and all this sort of thing. But then again, the you know the uh, the original trailer they put out where it showed all the environments, all the I think they had like rhinos and all this other stuff in like a cave and everything. Right. That stuff to me was really impressive. Um, like just just from like a kind of insider viewpoint, to me visually it was very impressive. Whether or not they have to downgrade a little bit when they optimize to make it run for everyone, because I know they're trying to support Xbox One, like the original. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I'm expecting big things. I think for a reveal that they bring out next, I would love to see different environments. Like even if, like you know, they keep doing these screenshot updates with the weapons and stuff. Right. I mean, they're all great, but we've we've kind of seen them now I think everyone's kind of over it like all the weapons generally especially the ones that we know about we know what they look like they're just going to look a bit nicer so to me like whenever I saw them I'm like oh that looks cool and then immediately I'm I'm not too fussed about it myself right um, but I want to see screenshots I, <laughs> yeah I want to see screenshots of something in engine in the campaign like at the moment multiplayer I'm not too fussed about because I think that's like a whole different ball game mm-hmm um, but I would love to see like a snowy environment, an interior, a desert environment. Just just one screenshot of each, just so we can see roughly what they look like. Um, as for the hexagons, personally, I think they look really ugly. Um, I'm sure they have some sort of meaning in the grand scheme of the campaign, um, which I'm sure we're going to find out. But just from, especially starting from nothing, and then we kind of dive straight into seeing all these hexagons everywhere I think obviously they had so much backlash and a lot of it was to do with the uh, the look of the hexagons because we've never seen that in Halo and especially like just kind of kicking it off to me I was like that doesn't look like Halo right yeah but I mean to me Halo 5 didn't look like Halo because even though visually it was amazing the design choices to me they kind of missed the mark Okay, so but then again, they're I, going back. Yes, because so. I, I agree with you on, on many things there, though. But with the hexagons, what I find interesting is actually how these things might play into the campaign as the campaign goes on. It's one of the last points I'm going to hit on here is because we're at 15 minutes now. But um, I actually, I, I would think for replayability purposes, it, from your perspective as, as an insider essentially utilizing these programs, would it be far-fetched to say that throughout the campaign, how the hexagons actually work once you're on this world would be similar to something along the lines of a progressive terrain, where essentially this ring was dismantled by something, and throughout the campaign, as you find out more about yourself and, 
and heal the the relation between Cortana and you know the other AI, which I'm not gonna say anything about that, right? But the thing is like <laughs> with like Shadows of Reach and all that. If you if you le- read that, you would understand. Um, yeah. You know uh, that the hexagons are actually throughout the campaign shifting and altering the terrain so that when you go through a place, it almost increases replayability because when you go through areas that you've been through before, it may not look the same. Do you think that's too intensive? Like, um, like actively changing terrain? <laughs> that is an enormous feat. Um, it depends on how procedural the terrain is and how it's been built. Uh, it's definitely not impossible. It's definitely a good idea. And to most, that's actually something that I hadn't actually thought of. Which, that kind of would explain why it looks the way it does. So you could spend a mission getting from point A to B, and then when you get to point B, the terrain shifts for whatever reason, and then when you turn around, it's a completely different level, almost. Because think about but it. But you're basically retracing your steps. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what they did in Halo CE, where you go, you go there and back again, right? Essentially. So I reckon they're going to be playing on that again. Essentially, and I think that in most Halo games, right, we'll end on this point, on most Halo games, it's about destroying the ring, right? But this game is about yeah. hope, so maybe it's about starting destroyed and then ending it fixed. Which would actually kind of tie in with the Flood. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it starts off destroyed and you have to fix it to kill the Flood. Yeah, dude. Again, who, even though it's like obviously the same thing again, but that would work. Who knows, man? <laughs> who knows, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but dude, I, I, I just wanted to say thank you for... For coming on we're about 20 minutes here we went way past that 10 right <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> i mean Time we could flies. probably talk forever but um yeah i just i just wanted to say uh, thank you for coming on and uh if there's any final words that you want to that you want to share or, or just shout out your socials or something like that that'd be great and um just everyone you know before he does that make sure you just pay attention to what this guy does you know he's doing it just simply for the love of doing it and um just you know more support the merrier but go on man it where can where can people find you yeah you can find me on youtube which is kind of my main uh social that i use um i'm sure a lot of the people that view your videos have probably seen my stuff Mm -hmm. but i'm basically just making what i think are cool videos they're not based in law in any way, shape, or form. So all my charity fools stuff is—it's got nothing to do with law. There's one Spartan that we've seen so far, and I always get comments saying it's a fire team. There should be more. And to me, I'm like, yeah, there probably should be, but I don't really care. I just want to make a cool video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's kind of like my moral with a lot of my stuff that I'm doing. Like the Halo 3 cinematics—they're going to be a little bit more faithful because it's a remaster. But at the same time. I am taking some design choices myself mm-hmm. just to make it my own. But yeah, you can check out my YouTube. I'm always updating it with whatever projects I'm working on. That's Halo VFX, um, right? As well as Twitter. Halo VFX on YouTube, yeah. And Twitter, yep. Yeah. Same thing, Halo underscore VFX. Awesome. Um, Man. There's a Patreon link as well, but that's just completely optional. Yeah, well, that's I mean, definitely... That's just a big way of supporting me. Definitely go support them on Patreon as well, and... Actually, for everyone that's watching this, I'm I'm setting up my own Patreon as well. Uh, we've talked about this before, and you know, if you want to continue to see cool videos from him and cool maps from me, you know, make sure you check those out uh, when the time comes for me and when you. Go People to should definitely YouTube. support you. You're you're gonna make some big things when Infinite drops. I can already tell. Oh, dude, I'm beyond excited. I mean, if we get AI, <laughs> it's game over. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot oh, of fun, dude. It, but um, imagine if you could literally build your own campaign maps. Oh, dude, if, You're going to be if, off the charts. It's going to be nuts. If I could make <laughs> campaign maps, then you know what would actually be kind of cool? We'll discuss this real quick on here. Imagine if I created campaign maps, but then you created cutscenes. <laughs> that, oh, that would be... It, if, if 343 did something like that, where they allowed us to like import movies that would play a certain checkpoint in a campaign map that you forged, that would be unreal. Well, not, that would well, be literally game changing. If we if we did that, right? I mean, if that ever becomes a thing. But regardless, it's just if we do get a really expansive tool uh, and we're able to create missions of sorts, then um, then maybe maybe doing some type of big fan thing, you know, it could be fun just by 
putting some type of YouTube content together. What, what, if you guys are still watching this Definitely. at this point, leave a comment below if you even like that idea. But um, yeah, man, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much. I know it's late for you. It's getting late for me. But um, this was a pleasure, and uh, hopefully we get to yeah, thanks for having do me. it again soon. Yeah, man, definitely. Definitely up for that. All right, man. Thank you so much. Peace. Awesome. Cheers.